Hello everyone, welcome to another StuCan Expert Session. My name is Trevor Erickson, and today I am super excited to introduce our Expert Session speaker, George Doe. George is the COO of a keyword research tool called Longtail Pro. It's actually one of my personal favorite tools out there on the market, so I'm excited to learn from him and learn more about the platform. Uh, George is also the co-founder at Wired Investors. In a past life, he worked in the financial services industry in Hong Kong. He has purchased a number of online businesses and has experienced firsthand the effect that good keyword research and conversion rate opt optimization can have on an online business. So without further ado, let's turn the time over to George and learn keyword research. Hi, and welcome to this webinar on keyword research. Um, my name is George Doe. I'm the S uh, Chief of Operations at Longtail Pro. And uh, today's webinar is um, presented by Longtail Pro in conjunction with Stukent. And you know, today we're just going to be going over some keyword research basics um, so you can kind of get started on keyword research yourself uh, for whatever project you're working on. So we're just going to jump right in here and get started. Um, before you kind of start going nuts uh, doing keyword research, uh, before you do anything really, you, you really have to think about what you're trying to achieve. Um, so, you know, the reason you do, you do keyword research is to find keywords that you can use to then drive traffic to your site. Um, and in this case, we're going to be talking about keywords primarily for SEO purposes, not for paid advertising, for example. Um, so you really need to think about what your goals are and whether or not the keywords that you're looking for are going to align with your goals. Um, and that's because there are, are a number of different types of keywords uh, that are useful for different goals. Um, and you know, today we're going to teach you a, a little bit about how to think about keywords, um, to find keywords that you know align with your goals that you'll want to target. Um, for your site, regardless of whether you know it's an e-commerce site or some other kind of site. So anytime you're thinking about keywords, uh, you really want to think about search intent. And the reason why search intent is important is because, you know, from an SEO perspective, which is what we're looking at today, um, say you're searching something in Google. Google really cares uh, what you think are going to be good results for whatever you're searching. Um, that's the business they're in, right? If Google started delivering bad results, people would switch to some other search engine. Um, so that's their business. Their business is to provide results that satisfy a user's query. Um, and because of that, you know, Google is going to serve up a bunch of results that they think answer or help the user um, with whatever they're searching. Um, so it's very important that you try and get in the mind of the user who is eventually potentially going to be your customer. Um, to try and understand what the process is that they take before they end up buying anything from you. Um, so, you know, this is kind of the, the consumer thinking process um, when it comes to interacting with search engines. Um, you know, the first thing that they will search, that they'll search um, about any product is, you know, if they don't know what it is, they might search, what is this product? So, you know, we're using coffee as an example here. Uh, you know, a user who, who doesn't drink a lot of coffee, who, who wants to know more about it, might search um, some of the following things on the left-hand side of this uh, chart. You know, what is coffee, coffee facts, etc. The second stage is consideration. Um, where the user knows a little bit about the product and, you know, they're starting to think about buying, um, but they're not quite ready to buy it. They want to do some research around that product, um, but the kind of the research that, that they're doing is a little bit more specific. So it might be things like you know coffee ground or beans, meaning do, should should I buy a, like ground coffee beans or whole coffee beans? Um, they might search best coffee brand to try and find um, you know what the best value for money coffee brand is, or what the best tasting coffee brand is, and so on. Um, and then you reach the purchase stage. And you know this is the stage where the consumer is ready to buy something, and they're actively looking to buy something, and that's where you get keywords like buy coffee beans, buy fair trade coffee beans, best place to buy coffee. Um, you know that's that's a user with real purchase intent. And then the final stage is the loyalty stage, where basically the consumer knows where they want to buy something, and they're basically typing in your brand name or your product name 
to get back to your store to purchase that thing. And for the purposes of this lesson, um, because we're going to be focusing a little bit more on e-commerce, um, you know, but setting up a shop um, to sell things online. Uh, in this case, um, you should be looking for keywords uh, in the third stage, the purchase stage, where consumers are, you know, searching something with the intention of buying something. Um, and we can go back to the example keywords there, like buy coffee beans. Um, basically, you know, the customer or consumer is, is putting in a query to Google where they have the word buy in it, or it's clear that they're looking for a way to purchase the thing that they're searching for. So now that you understand what we're talking about when we say search intent, um, how do you actually begin doing your keyword research? So the first thing you're going to need to come up with is a seed keyword or a set of seed keywords. Um, and what a seed keyword is, is basically a starting idea. Um, it's something broad and relatively simple. Um, and it's something that you can use to find competitors and influencers in your niche. Um, so, you know, we're not going to spend too much time on this because, you know, if we're coming at it at, at keyword research from a, an e-commerce perspective, um, I'm going to assume that you already have a product in mind. Um, so that would be your seed keyword. Um, but an example here would be trekking pole. Um, you know, if you have an outdoor shop and you sell trekking poles, that could be your seed keyword. So once you have your seed keyword, you then move on to expanding your seed keywords into a list of longer tail, more targeted keywords that you can actually focus on for your e-commerce store or your website. Uh, so there's a couple of methods that we use here. Um, firstly, you could try to find authorities in your niche. And that basically means, you know, finding blogs or websites that uh, are well known in the niche. For example, if you were in the technology niche, you might use Engadget for that um, or TechCrunch. Uh, our advice is that you should find authority sites that are more targeted. Um, so if you're selling trekking poles, try to find a site that specifically focuses on hiking or sp even more niche down specifically focuses on trekking poles. Um, and that way you'll get more relevant information and more relevant keyword ideas. Um, so, you know, if you're in, in the tech niche, but you're selling USB microphones, you might want to specifically target sites about recording uh, audio at home versus something larger like Engadget. So just a quick example here, I'm going to jump into Google and search trekking pole guides and just see what comes up and kind of click through to a number of guides uh, to see what they have to say about the product. And this is particularly useful, especially if you don't know a lot about the product. So it could be that you're stocking a new product or you're putting together an e-commerce store about a product that you don't know that well. Um, th this can work twofold. So, you know, you're, you're looking at keywords, but you're also kind of doing general research into the niche. Um, so I've just gotten a spreadsheet open here and you can use Google Sheets or Excel. Um, and I'm just going to put in hiking staffs because immediately that has come up. Um, and that's potentially uh, something similar or, you know, it might be a synonym of trekking poles. Um, so I'm just going to go through this article and see specifically what things that they talk about that could be used um, for us to, you know, find more targeted keywords here. So, you know, walking staff or travel staff are two examples that I found immediately. Um, shock absorbing. So, you know, obviously some of these trekking poles or hiking staffs are shock absorbing. So that's potentially um, a variable that we could add to a keyword to make it more long tail. Um, adjustable there and, and camera mount are both examples of things that you know you could somebody might search trekking pole with camera mount and you know suddenly that's a five word long tail keyword instead of a two word short tail keyword just gonna scroll through this site here um, and REI is actually not kind of just a website they also sell uh, outdoor gear but this guide will serve the same purpose um, so we're just gonna go through it here so, you know, down here we see adjustable, shock absorbing, um, ultra light, 
and camera mount, which we mentioned already. And it seems like trekking poles have a very uh, um, a varying number of locks available. Uh, materials wise, you can go aluminum or carbon fiber. Um, in terms of grip, you can go cork or foam or rubber. So we're just going to note those down as well. Um, and then, you know, women's trekking poles and other things you can consider. These are, you know, um, like baskets and tips. Those are other things that you could try to add to your keywords to find more long tail keywords. And we're just going to jump into another one of these guides to see if there's anything else that we've missed. Telescoping. Um, so, you know, that probably means that instead of being able to fold it, it comes out of the same pole. Um, you know, so we're going to put down folding trekking pole as well, right there. Material we've gone over already, basket size. And, you know, obviously we're, we're running through this pretty quickly um, in the interest of time. If you were actually building a e-commerce store around this kind of product, um, you would want to know all this inside and out. So you'd probably want to read through the guide um, properly as opposed to just scanning it. Um, but for the for the time being, we're just kind of looking through um, potential keywords and not so much reading the guides themselves. Another way you can expand on your seed keyword list is to use Google or Amazon Autosuggest. Um, and these will tend to bring out pretty uh, good keywords, um, particularly Google, if you're targeting if you're targeting SEO traffic, because you know if if Google pops up with a an auto suggest suggestion, um, chances are that somebody out there is searching it. Um, so we're just gonna do another example here. So I'm just in Google now. I'm just gonna put in trekking pole A and see what comes up, and then go through B and C and so on. And basically, you know, normally I would note down all of the keywords that we don't have already. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. Uh, hopefully you get the idea that you should be noting everything down. Um, and, you know, some of these aren't going to be relevant, like trekking pole reviews. If you're running an e-commerce site, isn't going to be relevant. But, you know, some of them are like trekking pole fishing rod um, is a long tail keyword for a niche item that potentially you could uh, target. So things like trekking pole length chart, locking mechanisms, trekking pole monopod, um, and so on. And you know, I'm not going to go through all the way to Z here, but hopefully you get the idea. And uh, we can basically do the same thing in Amazon. And the process here is exactly the same. I'm just going to type in trekking pole A and see what comes up. Um, Anti-shock. So you know, that's one we don't have. We would add that to our list. Uh, trekking pole bag. If you sell those, um, tracking pole collapsible, camera monopod, camera mount, carbon fiber, we have already. Uh, cork, we have already. Tracking pole foldable, we have already. Um, ferrules, I'm not sure what that is. We might want to note that down and, and kind of search it afterwards to find it found out what exactly what it is uh, trekking pole grip GoPro mount trekking pole handles so another thing to keep in mind is some of these may be alternative products that maybe you don't already sell on your e-commerce on your store um, but you may want to in the future so for example with with the trekking pole idea um, you know there seem to be things like trekking pole baskets and trekking pole tips and trekking pole um, camera mounts if they're sold if they're sold separately those are all potential products that you could expand into that fall under the larger umbrella of trekking pole um, so the next thing uh, you can do is to look at you know niche forums or Reddit or Quora, basically question and answer sites or forums. Um, you know to look for again any specific variations or details 
about a product that you could use to produce longer tail keywords so you're not targeting the short tail keyword trekking pole. So, you know, we're just going to go into a browser here and search trekking poles Reddit and see what comes up. I'm just going to open up a few of these windows here um, to find out, you know, what things the community uh, that purchases trekking poles are worried about or are concerned about. Um, and, you know, obviously, this is not just for keyword research. It's good to know this stuff because if you can make a change to your product that will help solve these people's problems, then you'll have a better product as well. Um, so there's not much on, on here. Um, people do seem to be concerned about the difference between carbon and aluminum. Um, and then also uh, different types of extensions and uh, locks, it seems. And then, again, carbon fiber versus aluminum seems to come up quite a lot. Um, so that's something you should pay particular attention to if you're selling um, trekking poles on your site, like which one is better, uh, which one is more popular. The types of locks, again, seems to come up here. Um, there seems to be a company selling bamboo trekking poles, which is interesting. That might be a, a further niche down market and you can market it as you know, being environmentally friendly as well. Um, so I'm, cert I'm certain that there's a market there. So we're just gonna add a, a couple of more keywords to this Excel spreadsheet um, with the different kinds of locks. And, you know, another good thing about going through this process is especially on Reddit and, uh, and forums, you're gonna find out which of your competitors people like the most in terms of their products. Um, and you can kind of, you know, if you're building a product from scratch or you're looking to source something, um, you can focus more on, you know, the aspects of the product that people like. Essentially, you can take what your competitors are doing well and copy it. Um, you know, as long as there, there are no patents or anything attached to the product, um, you should ha there should be no problem. So we're just going to search um, for, for farms now. You can see my search query, outdoor hiking farms, trekking poles. So there seems to be a debate about, you know, whether you want anti-shock trekking poles or not. I'm just going to close that there. And again, you know, on top of being keyword research, this will is this is like research on your products as well. Um, you can see what the market likes. Uh, so you know, some of these people are saying that they don't like the feeling of anti-shock tracking poles. Um, so you can you know think about that and see whether you'd rather offer a tracking pole with anti-shock or without, or whether you want to offer both. And it seems like they're suitable for different kinds of terrain. Um, so that's useful information to have because, you know, in your product description, you might want to put that in. Like this trekking pole is suitable for hard terrain versus soft terrain. Um, the anti-shock trekking poles might be more suitable for wet, uh, sorry, hard or um, more sturdy terrain. And then we're just going to search for Quora as well. Quora can be a great resource. Um, probably in this niche, it's less so. But you know, if, you, if you're selling something in the tech space, for example, um, Quora can be very useful. Uh, just seeing what questions have been asked about trekking poles um, to try and get a feel for what people are wondering, what people are confused about. 
So retractable is potentially another keyword that we could use. And then just going to jump into the forum here. So this person obviously has a strong preference. He likes a specific type of grip, a specific type of lock, a specific type of basket. Um, unfortunately, that link there doesn't work. But you know, basically we're building on not just our list of long tail keywords, um, we're also building on our product knowledge, which is also helpful. Because you, you, know, you should remember that keyword research um, at the end of the day is research. Um, so you know, if you can do some keyword research and also research a bit about your product, that's great, that's a two in one. Uh, the next thing you can do is research your competitors. And when you're researching competitors, I'm specifically talking about sites like yours. So it's probably gonna be a smaller e-commerce site in a specific niche. Um, what you don't wanna do is kind of try and do research on Amazon or Walmart or other like very large on uh, online re retailers because um, you know, that's not going to net a lot of useful information. What you want to know is for this kind of keyword, can a site like mine rank? Um, and so if you're running a smaller e-commerce store in the outdoors niche, you want to see other smaller e-commerce stores in the outdoors niche to be confident um, that you have a chance of ranking for these, these sets of keywords. So once again, we're going to jump into Google here and we're going to try something more long tail, something like anti shock tracking poll. Um, because if you just search trekking pole, it's likely going to be like Amazon and REI and other larger um, larger online retailers. So we're looking for smaller, less well-known online retailers here. Uh, so I just picked out one, backcountry. Um, I'm not sure how big it is. We'll take a look in a second. Um, then we're going to search buy anti-shock trekking poles, see if anything different comes up. I don't don't see anything in particular. We'll go with another search term here. Um, women's trekking poles. So, you know, REI, Amazon, those are kind of the, the sites that you don't really want to look at um, for, the, for these purposes. We're looking for something more niched down, more targeted and smaller. Um, so this hiking lady site doesn't seem to be uh, an e-commerce store, but We'll just open it up to see what it says. Carbon fiber trekking pole. So again, Amazon and REI. And then we see Gossamer gear. So I've never heard of this thing, which, you know, looks good. Because again, if a smaller niche e-commerce site can rank for a specific keyword, that means you can, because you're running the same kind of site. I'm just going to take something like ultralight trekking poles here and see if we can find any other smaller sites. Gossamer gear appears again. Z packs is one we haven't seen yet, so we're just gonna open that up. Um, this longwalking.com seems to be light heart gear. So now we're getting somewhere. Um, this backcountry store Backcountry.com seems to be a larger, um, somewhere in between, you know, the small kind of e-commerce site that we're looking for and some, something that's larger like REI. Um, so we're just going to kind of look at what specific keywords they're targeting. So you can see in the URL here um, and in the page uh, header, they're specifically targeting anti-shock tracking poles. Um, so we're just going to see what else they're targeting women's trekking poles. Okay, so you can see again in the URL, very clearly targeted, um, and then on the page as well. So, you know, typically you won't see this with larger retailers. Uh, their URLs will be all over the place because they're less targeted. And their strategy is not to rank for any specific keyword, but just to rank in general. Um, and that's where you can get ahead of these, you know, larger retailers. So let's just search women trekking poles here and see if backcountry comes up. And you know, they do, uh, they're at the bottom, but they do show up. And that's probably because they're specifically targeting this keyword. Whereas, you know, an, an Amazon URL is going to be all over the place. Um, the same thing with kids trekking poles. 
So, you know, we saw that they were targeting that. Um, and it, they're ranking number one for this probably longer tail keyword than, than women's. And again, that's because they're specifically targeting this keyword. And you saw that, that they were ranking above Amazon for that keyword. So, you know, we're going to jump into one of these e-commerce sites here now. Carbon tracking poles. That's clearly what they're targeting on this page. And that's probably why they're ranking for carbon fiber. Um, they're not targeting it in the URL, so that's a mistake on their on their end. Um, but you know they do have carbon fiber hiking poles there as well. And yeah, I, I'm not going to get into kind of on-page SEO for e-commerce, but you know you can kind of tell what people are trying to rank for based on um, what they have in their header and so on. And right now, you know, I'm basically trying to show you that ZPAX is a much smaller site. Um, you can see on Facebook they have like 11,000 likes. Let's see how many likes REI has. Uh, 1.6 million. So ZPAX is, you know, it's not a very large operation here. But you can see that they're ranking for ultra light trekking pole. Um, let's see. The fourth result there is ZPAX. And why is it that they're ranking for this? Um, it's because they've done better targeting. It's it's not perfect. They're not targeting it in the URL. Um, it seems to be, you know, it's in the heading. But it's not in the URL. So that's something they should fix. Um, and then they're targeting it through the page. You know, ultralight carbon fiber poles I see down there. And you know you can also tell that it's kind of a smaller shop because they're using PayPal it seems exclusively. Um, so this is an example to follow, right? Because they're a smaller site, they only use PayPal, so they're not using any um, sophisticated payment processors. But they're ranking for a long tail keyword, and they're competing with the big boys. They're competing with REI, and they're competing with Amazon. Um, and this is another one of these smaller sites that I saw, Lightheart here um, it's weird that that site is ranking but you know what that bodes well because that means that you know that site isn't targeted at all and in fact they don't even sell the thing that they're ranking for so that's another result that you can definitely beat because they're number one not targeted and number two it's a bad result that doesn't provide the user what um, what they want and so, you know, if you targeted that same keyword, chances are that you could rank above that particular site. 